All right. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Awakened View, episode five, today on August 17th. Thank you so much for being here. Um, your co-host, Laura Canfield, along with... Kimberly Crow, and it's the expanded view, but we, we are awakened too, so that's good. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. The expanded view. Awakened, expanded view. That's good. Yeah. Uh, I love it. Um, yeah, so the awakened, I put the awakened view in, in my title. That's, that's interesting. All right. So, so that's this is good. The expanded Spirits view. Tell us something. And we're talking about the awakened view. <laughs> That is so funny. Oh my goodness. Oh, well, it is what it is. Um, I'm just going to quickly share to uh, the page and all that wonderful stuff as Kimberly talks about whatever we're going to talk about today. See, we've got a new moon coming up tomorrow and we're in Leo. So that is, and it's, and the moon's also, the sun is in Leo and the moon is in Leo. So that's a lot of, lot that's a lot of lot. That's a lot of shine your lot energy that's coming in. Mm -hmm. So that the whole theme, let's see what the theme of this month is. I'll talk a little bit about that. While yeah. We're so we're, so you. basically we are talking so, about having a more awakened view today here on the expanded view. <laughs> episode five. <laughs> exactly. We are. And this, this, this energy of Leo and Leo should be like really awakening. That should be wakening people up if they haven't already. And it's I think like, that's what's yeah. happening a lot for, for a lot of people. They are starting to awaken more to, you know, their own consciousness of what that looks like, what that is. They are awakening to more and different ideas, perhaps, you know, different belief systems, different ideas right. and ways of living, right? So we are at, at this time becoming more awakened, absolutely. And, and you, you really have to look at what that means to you. What does it mean to awaken? And what does it mean to have an awakened view? And what does it mean to really look at your life from that lens, you know, from a more awakened view of, of your life presently and of your life, you know, in the past, you know, like getting that 2020 hindsight view um, of your past stories, etc. Right. And I think a lot of right now, too, a lot of that is coming up for people. I know for myself, I've been getting little flashbacks, little you know, triggers, kind of, of old stories that are coming up. But now when I'm looking at them, I'm looking at them from a, a more awakened view, right? Because I'm different now than I was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, etc. right? Exactly. See how they, I was able to flip that really well? <laughs> well, in the, you know, in, in even the perspective of that, that higher, you know, expanded perspective of what it meant to us, in, I call it initiation phases, what it meant. It, oh, I just kicked us on and I don't know if you could hear that or not, no. <laughs> but yeah, okay. where, where you were at then and where you're at now, you know, there's also a difference in the perception of that. I call those like an initiation, you know, processes mm -hmm. that we go through and it's in, you know, with ever spiral of that, there's a, um, a different, understanding of what the view even is you know there's a different view with the or maybe that's the it's a different view with the understanding or understanding with the view <laughs> it's like it's yeah and it's a spiral it's yeah. a spiral that we're that we move into the next evolution phase absolutely so when when like right now you know we're just coming into the new moon which is tomorrow it's been an interesting weekend for a lot of people. A lot of people, when I was talking to my clients earlier today, a lot of them were feeling down. Some were angry. Some were like feeling sad, depressed, etc. Some were just like not feeling anything, right? And so part oh, of that's that really is, interesting. Yeah, right. And so part of that is also, you know, uh, you know, the different energies for sure, but also looking at, you know what is your energy like right now? Where are your thoughts? What are you focusing on? And if you are not in a positive mood or in a good mood, you know, if you're willing to look at it and really go through it, you know, and really see what it is that's affecting you, then you also have the opportunity to shift out of that, right? So, you know, it's not always about just running away from something negative into something positive. It's not always that. Sometimes it is really important to look at, okay, why am I feeling like this? What is this? Like, what is this? What's going on? And what is this story that's coming up? And what wisdom can I take from it now, you know, that I wasn't yeah, ready for before? Right. Because any of that, 
energy that we call triggers, um, sometimes it is some kind of unfinished part with inside of yourself. And it's, and so when you drop into that, cause you know, it's about embodying, that's what we're doing is embodying spirit. We're not leaving this physical to go to spirit. We're embodying spirit. And so when there has been so much light exp expansion on the planet, cause you know, even earth herself, her magnetics were really high last week, mm -hmm. you know, with the, the uh, with the Schumann. And so that's her own vibration. And so when that happens, I mean, I know I was having dizzy stuff with it. A lot of people were. So sometimes when so much light comes in and you have such expansion, then there is like a, you know, there's like in, you know, an inhale and then, a, you know, there's a breathing thing that comes yeah. in, it comes back in. And when that, it's like you, you hit that, but then it, it moves again, just like a wave or just like a breath. But when that happens, if you, if they are feeling a bottom out or a lot of people felt exhaustion last week with that because mm -hmm. of the energies and it's a, it's sometimes that's the reset point. It's the part of your being reset. It's just like when your computer says, you know, there's an update and it needs to be restarted. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing. And so there's that, what's it do? You know, that it shuts down. It takes a moment to shut down before it boots back up. So that's what's happening in our own physical sy symptoms because when we keep being hit with expansions of light, then, you know, the body has to adjust to that energy. And if it's, if it's a so evolution thing that the soul is calling out for it, then the parts of the human aspect, the parts that's in the DNA and, you know, that came in from our family constellations, that, that, is leaving. So you may feel that shift and sometimes that toxicity coming up with it. I, I was um, doing my own, um, you know, I'd been talking about that, the eight, eight thing. I did a whole thing through that for the whole eight days. I helped energy for eight days for a group. You know, that was like the whole week of through that time period. And there was a day that I went into overwhelm because, you know, it was just so much of the mundane 3d stuff as i was in the expanded energy too and my brain trying to like do all of it you know <laughs> it's like and one day i just like i i was like i can't even do this nothing was working mm -hmm. and um i heard go out go outside and set and i sat down and i just started crying and it was the i mean i you know I did hypnotherapy. I did two years of integrative inner child work and certified in that. And during that, you do all that stuff. When I asked the energy, how old was it? How old was the overwhelm? Mm. It was three years old. Right. And I had a memory that I had never, ever had no conscious, conscious connection to this memory at all. I was three years old. And I used an ink pen <laughs> that the bank, you know how the bank gives out the free ink pens? Mm -hmm. The bank had gave the free ink pen to my mother, father, whoever. And my father was a teacher. So he needed to use supplies like that, you know, at school. And, and my mom, which, you know, when I was three, my brother would have been one. I guess she was overwhelmed. And she was screaming and yelling at me because I was using that free ink pen. <laughs> And that it, if I used it, then that meant they would have to go buy ink pens when they had been given this ink pen from the bank, like it was some big cherished. Da -da -da. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm sure she was just in a moment of overwhelm, you know, or whatever that was going on with her. I mean, whatever that even was and what that went into my system. And so uh, it might, for now, as I'm speaking about it, what I'm getting is, is it was probably the first time that I felt overwhelmed. And I, and it was, you know, that projecting of the energy from her and her overwhelm. And when you're that age and you're going into your own self identity and stuff. But what happened was I flew out of my body and went to another existence. And I, and then I, I saw how she could do that how she could travel and she just went into you know lollipop land <laughs> it's like she went to a place of 
total um, paradise and just went into imagination place. Mm -hmm. And I think that, um, I think I did that a lot as a child. I think well, she I, stayed I think, there. I think, I think some aspect of her stayed there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, because I mean, she, yeah. And it's where we can imagine everything at, you know, it's just like I could see her and, and we do this too, but I mean, it was like, she was really physically manifested right in front of her. You know, she would have a thought and then it would be a magical dragon. You know, it was like whatever it was. And it was this beautiful meadow with, you know, like a Bambi scene. It was, you know, little deers and bunnies and, and, and it would just, she could do that. And she was just like in that space of that. And so it, it, so she carries a superpower of that and she runs to that space when the overwhelm comes. And so there, so there was a part of me of, um, that I said and took the time to integrate her back in, you know, it's like to bring her to me now. So we still do our work and it's like, I, I, it's like as much work as I have done. And, and that, that showed up so strong for me. And then, I don't know, I mean, there was something about doing that, acknowledging her and retrieving her, if you want to call it that, you know, mm -hmm. whatever the words is that we use for that type of stuff. Um, I totally feel different in my whole being. Yeah. It's more, like... More complete, yeah. more full. And, you know, and right. that's the thing. It's like, how often have we all done that, you know, when we had overwhelm, when there was fear, when there were certain you know, situations that we wanted to escape from, which we couldn't physically escape. So, you know, mentally, emotionally, we, we escaped. Check out. Right? And, right. you know, how many of us were able to bring all of our pieces and parts of ourselves back into mm -hmm. this embodiment? Some of us right. haven't, you know? And, and, and that's, that's one of, the, yeah, it's one of the easiest things. I mean, that's, and you know, for me, it's easy. I just, I asked it. When I have those emotions come up, I ask the emotion, the feeling, the feeling when it goes into that, how old are you? Because that's who's running the show, you yeah. know, is the one that's that age, that's feeling that in that moment. And then I dialogue with it and I'm a journal, but that's, you know, ways that you can do your work. And you know, what was really interesting because I shared, because I share my experiences and my stories in my teaching. It's like I walk in this 3D world and I'm a teacher that shares my experiences, you know, and through that, it brings up the feelings in um, the people that I'm talking to. Mm -hmm. And, um, and so last night, you know, it's like, okay, finally it's done. And now I'm in my next launch with the next part of this. And so it's like a time to exhale. <laughs> and one of the people um, that had, um, you know, that had, had experienced the week with me, totally blasted me on the um like the my can my platform has a community in it mm -hmm. and i mean she blasted me she she said everything in the world and and that it was weird how i ended it and how inappropriate it was and that my 4d something and that my little girl was doing the show i mean it was just like what is she even talking about and you know what i did i blessed her i i was like I am so glad that you feel safe enough to be able to express yourself in this mm -hmm. moment. Mm -hmm. And, and she <laughs> literally tried to shame that three-year-old. If I had not done that recovery work, I probably would have freaked out. My bomb, my mama bear might've come out yeah, and took care sure. of her for, for to protect my three-year-old. And it was so interesting. It was so interesting because I witnessed the whole thing and I realized that um, modality of shame mm -hmm. that my mother uses so well and is such an excellent server of that, that this person also, that that had been used on her and then it triggered it in her and it still hadn't healed and that, um, and that I didn't carry it anymore because I didn't have any re I just witnessed what she said and I actually got tickled and I started laughing because I thought, well, isn't that interesting in that she attacked a three-year-old, <laughs> my helpless three-year-old, but my helpless three-year-old wasn't helpless because I laughed through the whole thing. Mm -hmm. And so what I did in that moment was I just did that, you know, like an orb of light 
and, and saw her in it. And I sent like, you know, a blessing to her three year old. And I just, you know, was like, I'm so glad you got to be able to feel safe and express this. Yeah. You know, this morning she thanked me and then she without thanked judgment the whole group. Too, you know? Like yeah. when you, when you blessed right. her, et cetera. Right. Was, I did. And she, judgment. and when, yeah, when the comment come through this morning, cause you know, my, my, uh, if you want to call it my businesswoman self, my whatever self, you know, there was a part of me that thought, should I remove that comment? <laughs> you know, cause we do that. We got like, go through the things and I just left it over or not. And then this morning, um, she actually thanked me. She thanked me for creating a safe container and that she had had this container and that, and then she reflected on exactly what it was that was going on with her and um, the programs that had been stirred up mm -hmm. between um, family and religion and all, because that was the processes we were doing. Yeah. We were clearing we were doing all, it's my money is magic thing that I'm going to talk about Wednesday on your show. <laughs> it's, it's part of the package Wednesday, mm -hmm. but, but we did the clearings on all of that energy with that, you know, like going into the encodements that that's the false survival codes that are all in family. And, you know, because we believed it and it was necessary at the time that it was for them to have the, mechanisms that they did to survive in the way that they did we don't have to be that anymore yeah it's not necessary for us anymore to carry that on so we did the clearings on all of those levels and so like that when that much light comes into your system those parts that have hit away because they had to to be safe it's going to start rumbling in there yeah and so, and so those, you may feel exhausted triggers. Yeah, yeah. But, those, but those are not like new triggers. They're just coming up to the surface to be acknowledged, to be looked at, to be reviewed, right? right. To and be whole to, again. Yeah, exactly. So it's not, it's actually a really good thing. It's actually a blessing. And it's actually a gift when these things come up because they give you that ch the opportunity and the chance to do something with them, love them and love yourself, right? And let them go if, right. That's, if that's right, you know? And, you know, and instead of judging ourselves saying, oh my God, why am I doing this again? Why am I feeling this again? Why is the story coming up again? You know, it's like, no, it's like, it's great. Because then you have the opportunity, right? And, yeah, and yeah. sometimes receive the, a new wisdom, a new awareness that you didn't have before or that you weren't able to receive before. Now you are, now you're able to receive it. Yeah. And when you go into the why, that's when you sit still to see, you know, what is it it's showing you? It's like, why is the why here today? <laughs> yeah. Because if we do something to avoid it, which sometimes we do in the moment, because that's what we did the first time to survive it, to get sure. to the next moment in life. Yeah. And so we may, if we avoid it and put it over here in, or use something to numb ourselves out or, you know, whatever, some other coping mechanism in that way that we think is a coping mechanism, like mm, chocolate ice cream or, you know, <laughs> so I think I did go buy chocolate ice cream, but, um, it will come back around again. Yeah. It will come back around again till you get your aha. And as soon as you get the aha and you, you are your own divine sacred witness. And when you stand in that place of that and witness, you know, that's all that this was. That's all that this was. So be willing to see it. Cause when you're, when it, when it's coming up again, that's, you're not going to re-experience it. That is not what's happening. You're not going to re-experience the whole thing, but you're going to see it. And hopefully from a different perspective, because you're wiser now, right? You're older and wiser and you know, you've learned a lot of, along the way. So maybe now is the time that you can receive it and receive the wisdom of it. Or just, you know, even if it's not even that, maybe you can just love yourself and forgive yourself anyways for that, whatever that experience was. Right. You know, just accept it. You know, and that's the thing. A lot of times we put these things on the back burner. It's like, oh, I can't deal with this right now. I can't deal with this right now. You know, it's like, it's too much. It's not too much. If it was too much, you wouldn't have it. Right. So, you, you know, and this is what we've, we, we are taught that we're so limited, but we're not. We're infinite beings with infinite potential and we can handle so much more than we think we can. So it's about getting out of that fear mentality, that lack space and remembering who we truly are, mm -hmm. right? Remember who you truly are. Right, the alchemy that we really are, that we can 
imagine and we create. I mean, you know, the whole globe's creating quite a bit right now. It's like, <laughs> your subconscious is going to create. It's going to. So you yeah. might as well, you know, um, use that. What is it that you would look, desire to create and then bring it in from a higher perspective? You know, exactly. what and it is that you want to envision and, and actually see the change. And sometimes people will say, well, I don't know what it is. I don't know what to create. I don't know what I want. I, you know, it's like, honestly, ask yourself, okay, my, my mind, this personality that's living this experience right now, maybe this does not know or doesn't want to know, but my soul, my heart knows. So if it did know, what would it know? That's a great one to ask. Yeah. And you know, really, truly, the only thing the soul wants is love and to be love and to feel love and share love. So it's okay as long as that's what it is that, you know, in the expansion that's happening and it's however it is that makes your heart sing, you know, of, of what that is, the parts that, you know, that um, when we use all of our tools that we have, then it creates that expansion and then the next thing opens and the next thing opens and the next thing opens. And when you're in that flow of that, you don't have to do a lot of doing. It just comes to you. You know, it just, you start being on automatic pilot with, you know, the next, the next thing comes to you. You have the thought and then it comes, you have the thought and then it comes. Awesome. Instead of yeah. the other automatic pilot that we've been on, you know, the unconscious automatic pilot, you know, where we're just, you know, not really participating in life. You know, we're not creating life. We're not even participating. We're passive. But now is the time for us to become active participants and active co-creators with the universe to create the life that we want. The, the life that brings us joy, the life that lights us up, the life that, you know, motivates us and propels us to take that next step. And I know a lot of people are still wondering, what is that next step? When, or when, it, when is that next step going to show up? Well, the next step is going to show up when you take that first step. Yeah. Right. Right? Yeah. The it, next it, step it, is going to show up when you take that first step towards you, your dreams, your desires, whatever it is that you want. Right. When you take that step of action, then the next thing happens. We can get information all day long. We've talked about this a thousand times, you and I have, about it. We can get it, but if we don't put it in application, then, you know, it's just a stagnated energy. Mm -hmm. It starts and, you know, accumulating. And, and a lot of it, you know, yes, you have, you don't have to do anything, but yes, it's nice to meditate. It's nice to raise your vibration. It's nice to be in a, in a more awakened state or awakened place, have that more awakened view, an expanded view, but you also have to take that next step. This is a co-creation, you know, that we're creating here with the universe, with ourselves, with the collective, with all of humanity, with the planet. You know, we're co-creating together, all of us. So we each have to play our part. Yes. That's the game that we're in. The game of creation. <laughs> and sometimes it can be really simple. I mean, it's, it's funny. We went on a, on a, I'm not going to, I'm not going to say hike because I had sandals on, so I'm not going to say hike, but, um, a we stroll. Went, you went on a stroll <laughs> Yeah, in, in the mountains. I'm going to say it was a mountain. Um, it was bigger than the hill. So, um, in, in the mountains yesterday and it was absolutely beautiful. And in that space, I took a little bit of time for myself, a, a few minutes, and just breathed, right? I just breathed in and out, in and out, the, the expansiveness of the, of the space and the place. And it was so beautiful. But, you know, someone might think, well, that's not, that's not doing, that's not creating. You're enjoying yourself. Yes, I'm enjoying myself going for a walk in the woods in nature where there's nothing else, right? But that's also creation. That's also taking action. Right. Mm -hmm. And that's also communing with nature, communing with the planet, you know, being one with everything. Right. That's also creating. So what was I creating? Yes. I was creating more space for myself. I was mm -hmm. creating a, a, a stronger connection relationship with the planet, with the mountains, with the trees. Right. With all of that. Yeah. Because nature will, you know, it's like it will feel that in you and surround you and then it will 
um, bring the energy to you and for the expansion, it will help you do that. And you know, that day when, when I was going through that and I, I was like, I can't take a break. I've got to get this done. You know, my mom was in that place. And when I, I, I was, <laughs> I'd breathe and I was, what, you know, what do I need to do to get out of this? And I kept hearing, go outside and set, mm -hmm. go set. And I was like, I don't have time to go sit and journal. You know, it was like, I don't have time. I just don't have time for this. <laughs> and so finally I surrendered and I went and sat in my favorite place in my yard that I had not been going to because I had a, my swing started to break on one side. And when I went and sat down there, I had created an area there because of, uh, of that's where I was going and it's like it's my set point mm -hmm. and I hadn't been going to that point anymore and as soon as I sat down that was the first that I felt the love and the being supported and then I and I mean that was what I heard feel how much earth herself loves you how appreciative she is for you to be here and feel that how excited she was when she knew you were coming and I started feeling that. And then it was, and then from that, I said, show me, show me, what is this, you know, what is this overwhelm? And it was like, how old is she? Wham, three. And I went straight into the process and, and it, and it gave me that supportive container to do that. It, you know, and it, it, it was pretty deep and there was a lot to it, but you know, it might have only took a couple minutes. I don't mm -hmm. really know. It's like, because you, when you go into that no time and all time thing, sometimes you're in it and, you know, hours have passed and sometimes it's just a few seconds, you know, it's yeah. like, that's all that it is because you go into that, to that time of that. And then, it, and then I felt, I just felt different. I don't have, I don't have that same um, energy running through my central nervous system of the fear of overwhelm. It's really the fear of the overwhelm, you know, like yeah. when it all starts coming at you and you can feel it start to, to build up. Yeah. And, and I can, I can tell a difference in my central nervous system. And that's when you really need to stop and slow down and take a pause, right? When right. you start to feel that energy, right. Of, of overwhelm coming, that's when you have to really stop and say, okay, you know, yeah, don't drink more coffee to get through it. <laughs> it's like, no, <laughs> or black tea or whatever it is. No exactly. more stimulants. <laughs> exactly. That's when you need to stop and the off, off, go and walk on earth. Yeah. 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 Go within or go outside, you know, and, and I always find going outside, going in nature, going to the mountains is always so beneficial for me, for me and my husband, Neo, my daughter, we just absolutely love it. And it, it just it just creates more space within you so that you can then, you know, function in a different way, right? When, when the work stuff happens or anything else, then you can function in a different way. And, you know, one of the things I was um, getting even for myself, you know, today or today or yesterday, I forget when it was, but I was getting, oh, I should have done this long time ago. I should have done this. I should have done that. I should have, I should, it's like, you know what? everything's fine. It's all good. You know, you do it when you do it and there's no judgment, you know, at that time, it wasn't the right time to do it now. So do, you know, so there's no shoulds, you know, shoulda, woulda, coulda, right? There, there's, there's no such thing. It doesn't work. So instead, if you think of something now, start doing it now, right? Right. Be with you now, right? Love right. yourself now. Do, do a spiritual practice now. Start now, right? Um, you know, because that is, this is the time now for you to create. So don't worry about, I should have done this before. No, just start now, do it now, and then take the next step. And then the next one, and then the next one as they show up. But the thing is, it's like, when you are wanting to do something, and this is something that a lot of people I know, some of my clients, I, I want to do this, then just do it. Right? Don't say, I want to do it, just do it. As soon mm -hmm. as you say, I want to, there's a break, there's a stop. You're not going to do it. There's a gap. So don't tell me I want to do this. Fine. Great. You know, and don't say I'm going to try. Mm -mm. Trying, there's no such thing. Just do it. And, you know, you don't have to be perfect when you start. There is no perfection. Just do the best you can. But be honest and true to yourself and just do it.
you know, and I think a lot of people don't start things because they want to be perfect and not make mistakes, etc. And then they don't, don't do anything at all. And so, you know, here I am letting you off the hook. You don't have to be perfect. You don't have to get it all right. You don't have to get it all, you know, 100% done in this moment. Take one small step. That's it. Yeah, have the experience. It's about stepping into the experience and what will the experience take you into the next experience? You know, what is that expansion? That because gets, you won't know until into, you start. You won't know no, what it's going to be until you take that first step. You won't know what it's going to be until you do that first meditation or do that first yoga posture or do that first breathing exercise or eat that first vegetarian food. You, you know, you won't know. I'm thinking of all sorts of different things. Right. right. But you won't know until you do it. So get out of your head, <laughs> come back into the body, you know, because you are here on this planet in a body, right? So your body is your body, is yes, clothes, to embody right? the experience, yes. You, you, you came here to embody yourself in, the, in this experience, right, to, to have certain experiences, to do different things, to feel different things. Mostly it's to love, love yourself, love one another, right, share love, express love. But you can only do that in the body. That's what you chose to, that's why you're here. So do it, try it. Well, don't, don't try it, just do it, play with it. Do it. I like the play with it part, it's like. Play with it. Yeah, that's much easier, you know, to, just to play with it, see what happens. Right, and you know, if we were trained, because we haven't been, and so maybe, you know, hopefully, hopefully let's create that for humanity. There is no such thing as failure, it's only experience. It, it is only so experience. It is. And so if we're totally, if that was never, ever had been put in to consciousness, I watched that with my three-year-old granddaughter. She doesn't know what that is yet. You know, when she paints, it's so funny. I should show you all her paintings. They're on the refrigerator. It's when we sit and paint, she'll go, okay, Gaga, it's a dragon. And then she'll go with the paint and she'll go dragon, you know, <laughs> and, and to her, it's a dragon. And yeah. I never, I, I just laugh and go on and she'll go, uh, we're going to paint a dolphin. And then she'll just go. Shoo. So she's going to be an abstract painter. Yeah, you know? for sure. <laughs> and it's like, she'll just, she doesn't, in her little mind, there is no, she does not look at it and judge it in the least little bit. Yeah. She doesn't look at it and go, oh, well, mine doesn't look like yours and I could have done better. Mm -hmm. She doesn't do that. She doesn't have that. That has not been programmed into her yet. Some way we have not done that to that child. And I'm recognizing we have not done that to that child. Yeah. And that that is something that gets, you know, it start it gets programmed in somewhere. Where do we start judging ourselves and, and doing that? I, I mean, I can remember when my daughter did it, that we went to go paint. And we were, we were, you'd paint these little ceramic things. It was the kids, it was like kids creations. And we painted these ceramic things. They were angels. We were doing it for my mom for, uh, for Christmas. Mm -hmm. And and my daughter was just painting away and she was older. She was probably six or something, maybe. And she was so proud of it. And then she looked at the one I was doing mm. and she went, yours is better than mine. Mine doesn't look like that. And she got really upset and started judging herself. And I was saying, honey, it, it's not better. It just is different. And I kept telling her that. And she, she, and she was actually a good artist at a small age, but she didn't have the same details because she didn't have the austerity in her hands that I did. Yeah. And she judged it. And you know what? She just threw it all down and pushed it to the side because she had that energy that if it wasn't perfect, she didn't want to do it. Mm -hmm. And, and I noticed with her daughter that she doesn't have that. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and so I don't know, you know, cause I wondered even then with my daughter, where did that come from? You know, I, I cause I witnessed it in her and I thought, how much of that do we bring in to start with? Mm -hmm. You know, what is that that comes in to begin with? Where, where was that at? And um, so maybe my granddaughter is removed enough away from my mother that she's not carrying this. <laughs> well, and, and you know, I mean, no, it's not all your mother's fault, but it. it it's also, oh, I'm it's, just kidding. I was. Well, just I know, but it's also in the collective. So, so right. you know, where does she pick it, that up? Oh, in well, the that's collective? true too. 
the where difference did she pick that up at, that? at school, you know, yeah. from other kids? Well, is even... and, and maybe that shows the difference in between the generations in humanity of like our generation, our children's generation, and now the grandchildren's generation. These kids are coming in without that. Yeah. yeah. You know, if I look at it that way, then, oh, oh, I mean, oh, it's, it's all me. All the work I did, she doesn't have that to carry now. Thank goodness. Really, That's awesome. You know, really, when we think of because when my daughter was born, I still had it to carry, you know, yeah. and it's like I was still carrying the load. So that went into her sales. And when you think about it, you know, maybe it, all that really is true that all this, you know, BS, new age BS, we say I'm seeing it in my granddaughter. Mm -hmm. She does not carry it in the least little bit. Not at all. You know, and, and it's amazing to to watch that in her. And when she first started walking, I don't, it, she was the funniest thing. She was like a little Buddha. She would like take a step and her eyes would get so big and she would get so excited. And then she would just start giggling. And it was like, she would look at her foot and it, you could tell she was just like, oh, wow, this mm -hmm. is like working. And she was having this new experience. Nice. And it was really interesting in witnessing that with her, witnessing what it was like to have this new experience. So I wonder what it's it would hysterical. be like if we all did that even now for all of our new experiences, really look at them as brand new. Right. Every right? moment is a new experience. Yeah. First time, brand new. How exciting. Right. Yeah that's going to, you know, that's going to change the way that we take the next step and the next step and the next step, right? Instead of judging ourselves, comparing ourselves, should have, would have, could have ourselves, right? Just be in the excitement of it. Yeah, the innocence of the next, whatever's unfolding, you know, that energy of that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do that innocent child's experience, feelings, just be, the yeah, whole. Be, being childlike, you know. Mm -hmm. So I wonder what, what it would be like for all of us to really experience that and really step into that and embrace that, that energy of, of being childlike with all of our experiences. Yeah. And just think about that. If it's something like that, you know, I'll say just something, we sit down at the computer and if we sit down and have that energy of like, oh my God, this again, you know, then what's that do to your energy? But if you go into like, oh, this is like, this is a new experience. How do I do this? You know, or a new flavor, like when it's a new flavor mm -hmm. and we're like, Ooh, what was that? That was something that's a different spice. I don't know that spice. And it's like, if we, if we do every moment of that, cause the truth is it all is a new experience. Yeah. Every moment is new. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right. exactly. We forget we're the that. one that tries to, yeah, we're not yeah. going to, we're not, we can't create the future from our past. We'll just keep creating our past. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll just, yeah. So what, you know, so what would it take for you to create your future from now and the future instead of the past, right? You know, yeah. from the energy of being childlike, from the energy of newness, right? New experience, joy, right? Looking at looking at every moment in that way, every experience in that way, but and full of play, right? Full of play and lightness. That's what we're, you know, like your granddaughter, or your granddaughter when she was first walking. That's what it was. She was just playing. Oh, I wonder what this will be like, right? It was like it was so funny to watch her, and she her eyes would get so big, and she would start to laugh, and she was just like the, you know, as the foot went down, and you could tell that she was like feeling all of that you know like the in she was in the experience yeah, <laughs> and, the, yeah. and then the next foot went and then she was like oh wow i'm here now you know <laughs> so, I, I, so I, yeah. I, I love what you just said about being fully in the experience right instead of you know being partially in our head partially out there partially you know multitasking and thinking of something other is something else you have to do but being fully present in that experience and seeing what that's like you know, and, and part of that is being embodied, being fully in the body, breathing, being fully present, being fully in the body, being fully in that experience. Um, you know, it, it, it takes practice because we're not used to it. We're used to being in our heads. We're used to thinking about a million things at once while we're doing something, right? And so we're not used to consciously choosing moment by moment. Mm -hmm. so, be present. 
That's Perfect. your homework for this week. <laughs> I know. I was just th thinking because that the new moon is coming in tomorrow, and and with it being that Leo and Leo, the Leo is the energy of the world is at stage. And it's like, so in that new moon energy, that's new beginning. So if we all step out in that moment of the world is their stage, you know, and what can that experience be? So this is a perfect time to do this, you know, tomorrow and the next day and, you know, to step into that. The world is, is the stage and, you know, how do I perform on it? <laughs> and, it and it's brand new. Every moment is brand new. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Love it. So yeah, it's a great timing for this new awakened view here on the expanded view. <laughs> it's perfect. It's all perfect. Yeah. Perfect. 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 All right. So, so what, what do you got coming up this week? <laughs> well, let's see. I have my membership call in 15 minutes, like always on Mondays. Um, and then Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we have Donna Marie Hellesey on tomorrow and then you are on the show the laura canfield show we can have this now global yeah. series on wednesday and then audrey light language on thursday and then on friday i'm ha i'm doing a cellular memory healing and clearing call on friday so that'll be fun um yeah what are you doing I am going to be on the uh, Laura Canfield ha Awaken to Happiness, is that it, <laughs> show on Wednesday yep. at 3 Eastern, 2 Central. I'm mm -hmm. going to be there. You can join me. We'll be doing activations. We'll talk. We'll, oh, we always have a good time. And what is uh, the subject going to be again? You mentioned the subject is going to be money is magic. And honestly, what that is, it's about your currency codes and connecting into it because the, you know, I see the distortions in the divine blueprint that's out there. So it's, it's, Spirit showed me how, you know, we know the systems that we've used in the past have been corrupt and they showed me where that was at and then how to move into that crystalline structure mm -hmm. and to embody this currency. It's like the currency is here for us to step into it. And when we clear all of this, that's what happens. And then you get to use it as a tool. It's like it, you're not in that um, corrupted matrix anymore. It's like the new that wants to come in. So we're going to talk about that. And that's, um, I just got through completing that um, eight day process, which well, whatever the whole week was with mm -hmm. the eight, eight to that. And so we just did that and um, already created the next level of that, which is embodying it. It's like embodying your alchemy. Awesome. And um, so the, the, the levels to that in the supportive container with that and um and parts of that are in my membership program and all of that stuff so yeah that's what i'm doing awesome. and I, i've got a bunch of commitments that i made i've got several and you know that was a, the other day when i felt like i was supposed to be doing and i wanted to paint mm -hmm. and i was like oh, i've got all this you know i know i i i, I was thinking about some i was thinking about my future and what i want to bring in but, uh, you know, and I, that I should be doing, but I just wanted to paint and I yeah. painted and while I was painting, you know, two people messaged me and, um, before it was over, before that painting was over, it's laying over here. I should show it to you all. Um, four people had contacted me to either be a presenter on their summit, their membership or podcast. Nice. <laughs> well, I was sitting and painting. I didn't mm -hmm. do anything. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so that's what starts happening when you go into that. I was Beautiful. just here being me and in that place of that joy. And as I was creating it and I was, I was, you know, thinking about the future as I was letting the paint flow and just that come in so that, you know, you can do that. You can do that walking. It's not a mental thing. It's more like you're dreaming it. You're, mm -hmm. it's like, that's one of the things that I do too. I'll, I'll say spirit drew me in. What would you dream? And then when I do that, cause I have stepped aside, I, it, it, it just starts unfolding. You know, I step out of the way and go, okay, spirit dream me in today. What are we going to dream today? And it, it starts to, the magic comes. The magic comes. I love that. The magic comes. So are you willing to receive the magic? So Kimberly is going to be talking about the magic of money on Wednesday on the Laura Canfield show, Wake and Happiness Now Global Series. So you can find out more 
uh, about, you know, money magic on Wednesday. Yay, I'm excited to share with, uh, with, our, with, with the community. Kimberly, more of what you have to share. I mean, you're, you've been on our, our guest many times and we always love having you. It's always such a high vibe call. We just, it's such, so much fun. So I'm looking forward to that on Wednesday as well with you. Yay. Yay. Awesome. Okay. Good. Well, all right, I'll see everyone. you Wednesday. Everybody, <laughs> we'll see you. Everybody, we'll see you all on Wednesday and before. If whatever. Yeah, we'll, be, we'll be together again. And don't forget New Moon tomorrow. So do your New Moon stuff tomorrow the best you can. Right? right. And, and step into newness. Step into joy. Step into, you know, um, the world new is your stage. Right? The world yeah. is your stage. Exactly. Show up. Take part. Right? Co create. All right. Awesome. Thank you so much, everyone, for being here. Um, until next time, may you continue to be blessed with an abundance of joy, peace, love, happiness, prosperity, and radiant health. Sending you all much love and blessings always. Thank you for being the gift that you are. Bye. <laughs> Bye for now.